Have father and son conceded defeat? Have Udhav Thakre and Aditya Thakre basically thrown in the towel? Well, technically not just yet, but Udhav Thakre, in a speech just now to district heads, has talked once again emotionally about how he never wanted power at all. And Aditya Thakre, the Thakre son, has said, we don't have the numbers. It is perhaps the clearest signal from the Thakre clan that the end is near and that they may be throwing in the towel very, very soon. Both father and son speaking in tandem, speaking to the Shiv Sena and the Shiv Senics and saying, we don't have the numbers, but of course, trying to strike that emotional chord. It's the second time in two days that the emotional angle has been amplified by the Thakres. Will it work is the big question. And all, and all the way across the country, of course, in Gohati, the rebel base is only swelling with Eknath Shinde claiming to be the real Shiv Sena, which is why we're asking here on India Today and on Five Live, will the real Shiv Sena please stand up? Because that's the question the Shiv Senics are asking. That's the question those who voted for the Shiv Sena are asking. And those who believe in Bala Sahib Thakre's legacy are probably asking most of all. I'm Shiv Arur. Thanks for being with me. These are the headlines at five. All eyes on rebel Eknath Shinde's Ghar Wapsi. The rebel MLA speaks exclusively to India today in his longest interview so far. Claims the support of 50 plus MLAs. Says we'll meet the governor soon. Udhav Sena seeks disqualification of 16 rebel MLAs. Maharashtra Chief Minister compares rebels to insects and rodents who have eaten the party hollow. Big, big attack by Udhav on Shinde and Co. Three days into the Maharashtra political crisis, Team Modi breaks silence. Union Minister Piyush Goel tears into the Agadi, says the unholy alliance was bound to fail. This is a big India Today political exclusive. NDA candidate for President Draupadi Murmu files her nomination. Prime Minister Modi and NDA bigwigs accompany her. Major vindication once again for Prime Minister Modi. Supreme Court upholds clean chit to Modi in the 2002 Gujarat riots case. Top court says that plea filed by Zakia Jafri is devoid of merit. BJP claims massive vindication. Alright, we've got some breaking news coming in from Mumbai now. It's the next big huddle that's taking place in Maharashtra state capital. Another high-level meeting with Sharad Pawar, his nephew Ajit Pawar, Home Minister Jayant Valse Patel and Praful Patel of the NCP are all going to be meeting Chief Minister Udhav Thakre at Matoshri at 6.30pm. Remember, Udhav Thakre is Covid positive. Uh, so, there, it will have to be a, a meeting with all precautions exercised. But this is the highest level meeting that will be taking place so far since this story broke on Tuesday morning right here on India Today. Sharad Pawar, the Home Minister of Maharashtra, Jayant Valse Patil, Ajit Pawar, also a minister, and Praful Patel, who is... Sharad Pawar's senior party colleague will all be calling on Udhav Thakre. It comes just a couple of hours after Udhav Thakre made this speech to district heads where he, in an uncharacteristically aggressive uh, turn of events, Udhav Thakre described the rebels, the Shinde Sena, as insects and rodents who have eaten the party hollow. This is an emotional Udhav who has turned angry and he will be hosting Sharad Pawar and ministers of his government 
at 6.30 p.m. 90 minutes from now is when that meeting will be taking place. So, Saurav Vaktania is with us live outside Matoshri where Udhav Thakre and Aditya Thakre are currently. Uh, uh, we also have Polomi Saha who's standing by outside the Radisson Blue Hotel, the, the five-star fortress where the Shinde Sena is currently camping. To you first, Saurabh, Sharad Pawar, Jayant Valse Patil and others will be calling on Udhav Thakre at 6.30 p.m. What is this going to be about? Is this going to be a, a, you know, another emergency strategy meeting? Or could there be something big that comes out of it? Well, Shiv, we need to understand that uh, Sharad Pawar, Ajit Pawar, Jain Patel, Praful Patel, these are the big names of the politics in Mumbai. These people coming to meet Uddhav Thakre at his residence in Matoshi itself makes a big statement. And this statement is by send a very good uh, message from Uddhav Sena's camp to the rebel camp of uh, Shinde uh, in Guwahati. Now, what we need to understand over here is there are several rounds of meetings which are happening one after the other. The target is not just the MLAs to bring back the MLAs, but the upcoming elections as well. Shiv Sena doesn't want to lose the BMC election. They don't even want to lose the ground workers of the Sena. Now, what is happening is Sharad Puwar is giving a full support to Chief Minister Uddhav Thakre. Now, he's one of the most powerful uh, leader in the state of Maharashtra. So. Sharad Pawar is claiming that we have full support to Chief Minister Uddhav Thakre. We stand with the MBA government. Come what may the situation, we will figure out this particular situation. So now what is going to happen over here? Round of meetings are going to happen. Now Sharad Pawar coming to meet Uddhav Thakre and, and at the other moment, Shiv, let me tell you the disqualification moved by Uddhav Sena from 12 to 16. This is going to take a lot of time. Now, the time is needed by the Uddhav Sena and this will delay the whole procedure. So, more delay, the, uh, the MLA sitting in Guwahati likely to get frustrated. They will get more time to convince them to come back because there will be many calls. No, but are they running made. out of patience? Saurabh, stay with me. Let's get, let's so get a perspective on that from, uh, from Polomi, who's in Guwahati, right outside the Radisson Blue Hotel. Uh, Polomi, in light of this meeting where Sharad Pawar and all the big guns, uh, uh, you know, Jayant Patil, I uh, accidentally identified him as the Home Minister, that's somebody else, sorry, Jayant Patil will be, uh, you know, going there uh, for this meeting with uh, Udhav Thakre. Uh, obviously, you know, the, the Shinde Sena, which is behind you in that hotel, Polomi, are keeping track of every single thing. They've got their own people in Mumbai who are telling them what's going on. Uh, you know, how will they see this? Is, 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 is each side playing for time right now? Because like you've been rightly saying, the more this stretches out, the more precarious it becomes. Absolutely, Shiv. It, it, it would be the case with anyone for that yeah. matter, you know, because they're here in unknown uh, territory. Uh, you know, they're spending time locked up inside one hotel. Obviously, they have the entire hotel to themselves. They can move around. Security is extremely tight around the hotel, but then it's still one location and they, the, they've they been inside over here. So they're soon going to run out of patience. Also, very importantly, Shiv, because of uh, two subsequent back-to-back -back, uh, bypolls that happened in Maharashtra, first the Rajas by elections, then the MLC elections. Most of these MLAs in fact were out of their constituencies. They have been in Mumbai for a very, very long time before they were whisked away to Surat and from Surat to Guwahati. So they've been away from their constituencies for a long stretch of time to go back to their constituents. How are they going to go back to their constituents and explain this absolute absence from their constituencies just because they were bargaining for power? Is that how they're going to explain? So clearly, if Eknath Shinde has to do something about the numbers that he's managed to garner and muster, he will have to do something very, very soon. But like Saurabh was pointing out, there is a long drawn out process as far as the disqualification um, notice is uh, concerned. And with 16 rebel MLAs getting that notice and likely that the deputy speaker as per protocol will call them in fact uh, to hear them out. There's a possibility of a video conference as well. But then again, it's a long drawn out process. If they're physically called, are they going to go to Mumbai because then mm. there's the threat that Eknath Shinde will fear uh, the fact that you know they could be broken and then of course uh, the ranks could be broken 
and if it's over video conference again the process is very very long so uh, this is going to be very interesting uh, you know going forward you know well. all eyes are going to be on that 6:30 pm meeting sharad pawar will be meeting udhav thakre for the second time in two days big meeting there will also be jayant patel there will be uh, you know praful patel and others who will be part of this meeting you know the, the tantalizing question is is it going to be more baat cheet or will there be some decision something to announce either a resignation or revealing that they've got more numbers more than just the usual you know claim versus counter claim war that has taken place so far because remember only the shinde sena has now demonstrated that it has the numbers and aditya thakre very importantly has candidly admitted in front of shiv sainik just about 20 minutes ago that the udhav sena as it were does not have the numbers is that a concession of impending defeat or could there be some aces up the sleeves of both udhav and pavar are the questions that need to be asked here's what udhav thakre the man who stands to lose the most right now here's what he said as he addressed shiv sainiks and district leaders just under an hour ago on zoom take a look at this परवा मी बोललो आणि मी वर्षा सोडलो आणि माझ्या मातुश्री मध्ये आलो काही जणांचे मला फोन आले आजही येत आहेत की उद्धवजी तुम्ही वर्षा सोडायला नाही पाहिजे होत म्हंटल का नाही लोकांना असं वाटतं तुम्ही जिद्द सोडली म्हंटल मी जिद्द सोडणाऱ्यातला नाहीये मी मोह सोडला पण जिद्द नाही सोडणार मी कधी आणि ज्या गोष्टी आपल्या नाहीतच त्या सोडायचा मोह हा असू नये का महत्वाकांक्षा जरूर असावी पण तिला ती राक्षसी महत्वाकांक्षा असता का मारे की ज्यांनी दिलं त्यालाच खायचं ही महत्वाकांक्षा नाहीये ही महत्वाकांक्षा असू शकत नाही आणि जास्तीत जास्त काय केलं तो असतो मी आमदार नेल्यान घेऊन गेला घेऊन जा आणखी गोळ्याला घेऊन जा तर घेऊन जा तुम्ही झाडाची फुलं तोडू शकता झाडाची फळं तोडू शकता पण झाडाची मुळं ही उपटून काढू शकलेल्या नाहीत just look at how the numbers have increased you know while it is a face of defeat a face of things slipping out of their hands in mumbai for the udhav sena for the shinde sena for the shinde sena or shinde's list as one popular internet meme today has claimed the numbers are doing all the talking apart from this image itself let's take you through what how the numbers have increased over the last few days just take a look at how the numbers have actually increased over the last few days day 1 day 2 day 3 day 4 nothing tells a picture like these pictures look at this from surat on day 1 to guwahati on day 4 this is how the numbers have actually increased four days 34 35 36 and then 37 and those numbers are holding steady that's the real problem for udhav thakre and the udhav sena in mumbai right now they claim that they've been in touch with at least 21 of these rebel mlas but there is no sign that any of the shinde mlas are actually changing their mind or having a change of heart as of now this is the increase and this is what is giving eknath shinde the power that he is exuding especially in that long interview that he's given to india today let's go straight across to india today sahil joshi joining us live uh, from mumbai sahil uh, 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 the, this big meeting at 6:30 pm udhav thakre is at home in matushri sharad pawar jayant patel uh, 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 ajit pawar and praful patel will all be calling on him uh, what is the sense you're getting uh, uh, sahil because this comes just you know it'll come just a couple of hours after udhav thakre's speech as well as aditya thakre where they say they don't have the numbers which is a fact but what are you expecting to see happen at this meeting uh well uh, shiv as per my information they haven't said that they don't have the numbers what they have been claiming yet that the num- there will be numbers they may not be numbers but what matters is that how they ran the government is what they have said what is more important right now is that the, that ncp wants to really understand the situation because what has been uh, the claims which has been uh, you know the shiv sena leaders have been making claims uh, vinayak rao the shiv sena secretary is making a claim that uh, 18 mlas are in touch with uh, uddhav thakre 
टुडे समबडी मेड अ क्लेम दैट ट्वेंटी वन एम एल एज आर इन टच विद उद्धव ठाकरे वेर एज द ग्राउंड सिचुएशन शोज दैट एवरी डे फ्यू ऑफ द एम एल एज हुव अटेंडेड द मीटिंग यस्टडे विद उद्धव ठाकरे आर गोइंग टू सूरत एंड फ्लाइंग डाउन इन अ चार्ट फ्लाइट टू गुवाहाटी एंड जॉइनिंग द शिंदे कैम्प Why this flow of MLAs are happening despite the meeting with Uddhav Thackeray at Varsha uh, since last two days? There have been at least five MLAs who originally attended the meeting with Uddhav Thackeray have flown to Guwahati. So NCP really wants to understand where they are standing at this point of time. Will this government survive? Because the deputy speaker is of NCP. If they want to keep the fight going on, then the deputy speaker's uh, decisions are going to be really important. If Uddhav Thackeray claims to have the numbers, only then there is any sense of doing this fight. Otherwise, there is no sense of doing this fight. It will be just prolonged fight. And at the end of the day, because they didn't have the numbers, uh, they will lose the fight. And also, there will be a big loss of face. Rather than that, what is the situation? What is the real situation? Uddhav Thackeray hasn't communicated that correctly with the NCP leaders till now. Uh, day before yesterday, before Uddhav Thackeray left Varsha. Uh, Sharat Pawar and uh, some other leaders had met with Uddhav Thackeray. They discussed certain things. Uddhav Thackeray that that day claimed that he hopes uh, he still hoped that people will come back. After that, he tried to speak to uh, Ekta Chinde a couple of times. He spoke to Ek Ekta Chinde also a couple of times. Ekta Chinde didn't relent. They also tried to speak to some other people. After that, the Chinde camp released a video of a MLA saying that how Uddhav Thackeray mistreated Shiv Sena MLAs. who are uh, right now sitting in guwahati so looking at the whole situation uh, there is a apprehension within the ncp as well that what exactly is happening why shiv sena is unable to protect yes. the mlas even the mla from areas like dadar mahim which is the core area of shiv sena where the shiv sena bhavan the shiv sena uh, uh, headquarters is situated even that mla who was standing outside shiv sena bhavan just a day before and speaking against ekna chinde is the next day he joins the ekna chinde camp okay. what exactly is happening uddhav thackeray tried to clarify today to his supporters that he is not behind all these things what he actually wanted is to protect the interest of maharashtra and that's what he has done he also said that these people actually backstabbed him mm. he also said that these people will not get elected if they don't use the surname thackeray and uh, that of shiv sena so he is trying to make clear that he has no hand in this this is not a janata dal secular model which happened in karnataka where uh, kumar swami yeah, revolted yeah. formed a government with the bjp and then uh, hd deve gowda and kumar swami again came together this is not that model is what uh, um, uh, uddhav thackeray is trying to explain to his supporters it looks like that even ncp wants to have that clarification they also want to understand where this is going to head if they, he doesn't have the numbers why doesn't he admit it why he still uh, is claiming that there uh, there are certain mlas after coming back to mumbai they will come back to uddhav thackeray camp it's something they want to re understand and that is the reason why ajit pawar okay this time is going to go and meet uh, uddhav thackeray not sharad pawar ajit pawar is going to go to matoshri and meet uddhav hmm. thackeray to understand uh and to uh, you know got the situation right now uh within shifts and action sahil thanks very much for that uh, all round perspective on that important meeting that is going to take place we'll also get you an update just shortly from guwahati as well here are the latest updates related to what's happening minute by minute because things are changing so rapidly here's the very latest that we've gotten updated for you now rebel leader eknath shinde who's been camping with his shinde sena has cancelled his visit to mumbai he was supposed to be flying back home today saying that he will stay in guwahati for some more time obviously negotiations and all the dealings are still taking place and he's not sure of what the end game will be the shinde clan continues to swell however so it's advantage eknath shinde and it's growing stronger with one more sena mla dilip lande landing in guwahati earlier today to join the rebel faction camping at the radisson blue hotel in guwahati the total number of sena mla supporting eknath shinde has reached 38 which is more than required to buck the anti defection law Now the Udhav faction has sought the disqualification of 16 Sena MLAs of the Shinde Sena under the 10th schedule. Maharashtra's Deputy Speaker Narhari Zirwal has also been approached with a plea. Narhari Zirwal is said to be close to Udhav Thackeray. Now Shiv Sena Supremo and Maharashtra Chief Minister Udhav says 
that just because he had left Varsha, which is the official residence of the Chief Minister of Maharashtra, it doesn't mean that he has abandoned the fight uh, for, for, you know, for, for what is right. Maharashtra Chief Minister further says that he is not attracted to power, but the way the rebellion has happened was not correct and that he still has the will to fight back. Meanwhile, amidst this Maharashtra political crisis, two independent MLAs have demanded the removal of Deputy Speaker Narhari Zirwal, accusing him of being biased towards the Udhav camp. That's him on your screen. Well, Maharashtra Chief Minister Udhav Thakre is the person who stands to lose the most and he's decided that playing on emotions is going to be the way that he wants to handle this. He and his son Aditya just made an emotional appeal to their MLAs. Udhav countered the rebel MLAs charge that he was inaccessible, saying he couldn't meet all of them as he was unwell and was undergoing surgery after the pandemic. That's the reason why they couldn't reach him. Remaining defiant, Udhav says that he has left the chief minister's residence but will not give up the fight, reiterating that he's not greedy for power and that he never thought that he would become chief minister of Maharashtra. He's repeating that statement over and over again. Now, while his son Aditya Thakre appears to have conceded defeat on numbers, not defeat overall, but as far as numbers are concerned, in an address today, Aditya Thakre clearly said that they know longer have the numbers, but he went on to say that the MLAs in the Sena had betrayed the party towards the end. And emotional Aditya also said that their work speaks for itself and that his father Udhav has always been approachable to every MLA. आकडे विधिमंडळ जसं राऊत साहेबांनी सांगितलं असतात नसतात सत्ता येत असते जात असते हे सगळ्यांबरोबर होत असतं पण परवाच्या उद्धव साहेबांच्या फेसबुक लाईव्ह नंतर मला एक कळलेलं आहे की ह्या महाराष्ट्रात आणि ह्या हिंदुस्थानात आकडे असले नसले तरी ह्या अडीच वर्षात जे आपण काम केलेलं आहे मुख्यमंत्री महोदयाने जे काम केलेलं आहे प्रत्येकाच्या हृदयावर सत्ता करणारा एकच माणूस तो म्हणजे उद्धव साहेब ठाकरे नाव एकनाथ शिंदे द रेबल बॉस हॅज स्लॅम द उद्धव गव्हर्नमेंट ओव्हर you know, this attempt to disqualify some of these rebel MLAs, saying that he will not get scared and has called it just a fabrication, a shallow threat. He further threatened action against the Mahavikas Agadi in turn and Chief Minister Udhav Thakre personally. Here's what he said. The Shinde Sena is getting stronger by the day. From 34 MLAs on Tuesday, Shinde on Thursday had 38 Uddhav MLAs at his rebel camp in Guwahati. Shinde now claims his Sena strength could swell to 50 plus. Another Sena MLA, Dilip Lande, joined the rebel faction in Guwahati. The balance of power between boss Uddhav Thakri and his former ally Eknath Shinde has begun to shift. The Maharashtra chief minister is trying to pull a rabbit out of the hat. His recent attempt of seeking disqualification of 16 rebel MLAs has been challenged by the new tiger of the Sena jungle, Eknath Shinde, who claimed that his supporters will not be intimidated by disqualification threats and called it a sinister plot to derail his plan. Eknath told India today exclusively that more than 50 MLAs are backing him in his revolt and many more are waiting to join. The anti Uddhav camp has reached the critical number of MLAs, that's 37, required to split the party in the assembly without facing the anti-defection law. लोक शाही में डेमोक्रेसी में एक नंबर्स और मेजॉरिटी को बहुत इंपॉर्टेंस होता है और वो हमारे पास में है यहां पर जितने आवश्यकता है उससे कई ज्यादा लोग यहां पर है 50 प्लस हमारे साथ में एमएलए हैं और इसलिए जो भी होगा कानून के मुताबिक होगा 
Meanwhile, independent legislators supporting the BJP, Mahesh Baldi and Vinod Agrawal, have urged the Speaker not to disqualify the rebel Sena MLAs. Eknath, however, claims that it's his fight and not the BJP's. No, 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 no you know, Shiv Sainik's people who support the Shiv Sena, the people of Maharashtra probably, or at least some of them are wondering, you know, what would Balasaheb Thakre think about all of this? I mean, I don't think anyone has any illusions about which side he'd be on, considering on the one side is his own son, his own flesh and blood, Udav Thakre. But what about the legacy of Balasaheb Thakre? Because remember, both sides are invoking that legacy in an effort to really flex muscle and claim to be the real Shiv Sena. Take a look. Udhav, Raj or Eknath Shinde, who will win the battle for Bala Sahib's legacy? <laughs> With the rebel camp numbers swelling, Eknath Shinde is all set to give a double blow to Udhav Thakre. Not just is he all set to push him off the chief minister's chair, but is also likely to end Udhav Thakre's reign in the Shiv Sena. With the rebel camp near close to proving two-third majority, the question is if Eknath Shinde will now float his own party. Eknath Shinde claims to be a true Shiv Senik and has promised to work on the ideals of Bala Sahib Thakre. Udhav Thakre has not had it easy either. Two months after Bal Thakre's demise, Sena Executive President Udhav Thakre took over as the Sena President in January 2013. He admitted though that he could never replace his father and epithets like Supremo and Hindu Ride Samrat will always be associated to his father Bal Thakre. Trying to stay true to its Hindutva ideology, Shiv Sena under Udhav Thakre had allied with the BJP in 2014. The situation reversed though in 2019, with the two parties joining hands to fight polls together, yet splitting soon after, as BJP 105 seats refused to give up the Chief Minister's chair to the Shiv Sena, who landed 56 seats in the 288 member assembly. Udhav then took the unexpected route to the throne by allying with Congress and NCP. Udhav Thakre since then has been slammed for shunning Sena founder's Hindutva legacy. He did respond to critics though, saying that his idea of Hindutva is different. Taking a jibe at the BJP, Udhav was heard saying he does not want a Hindu Rashtra which is not peaceful. Shivasena kadapi Hindutva pasun ani Hindutva kadapi Shivasena pasun dur hou shakat nahi. Kand Shivasena pramukhani zo ek kana mantra dile lai ki Hindutva haam cha shwaas hai. On the sidelines now is also Raj Thakre, the nephew of Bal Thakre. The MNS chief, in fact, bears close resemblance to his uncle in looks, aggression, and oratory skills. He broke away from the Shiv Sena over tussle on who will be Bal Thakre's political heir. Raj Thakre founded MNS in 2006 and popularized Sons of the Soil campaign over which Shiv Sena was built in 1966. The brightest showing for the MNS was in 2009 when Raj Thakre ate into the Shiv Sena and BJP votes in Mumbai, Thane, Pune and Nashik, bagging 13 seats of the 288 Assembly. 
MNS since has seen rapid decline. In 2014 and 2019 assembly elections, MNS managed to secure just one assembly seat, losing deposit in most others. In May 2014 Lok Sabha polls, Raj Thakre openly backed Narendra Modi for Prime Minister and fielded candidates mostly against the Sena. However, in 2019 Lok Sabha polls, Raj Thakre took a U-turn, criticised Narendra Modi but did not contest polls. Well, Udav Thakre had till lately been the popular choice to take forward Bal Thakre's legacy. But of all the revolts that the Shiv Sena has faced in over 50 years of its existence, the current one, led by Eknath Shinde, looks the most threatening. Udhav now needs nothing short of a miracle to salvage his party. Vijay Kumar for India Today. Now, the Udhav Sena is, as you can imagine, in total firefighting mode at this point of time to save the Mahavikas Aghadi government. The Sena has now sought the disqualification, as I said, of at least 15 MLAs. With this, can the Udhav Sena save itself? Because if it manages to get 16, 15 or 16 MLAs disqualified from the Shinde Sena, then the numbers become much more manageable and will not mean an immediate end to the Aghadi government. Take a look at this report. It breaks down the numbers and tells you how they fall. Public display of might. Massive protests. And an ugly warning of a street fight. Cornered Udhav is doing everything he can to save face. As his numbers dwindle to the teens, Udhav is firefighting the rebellion within Sena to save the Mahavikasa Ghadi. And after this emotional message on Wednesday, Somori Unmala Sangitla Kuma, the ten statement dealer, Ki Udhav Thakre Mukhamantri Padavati Nakot, Termi Atta Mukhamantri Padasa Rajina Madela Tayarahe. Udhav has followed it up with another emotional outburst, hoping it'll cut some ice with the rebels. Udhav's son Aditya also came to his father's rescue, saying there were attempts to disrupt peace and harmony in Maharashtra. He also wrote that such betrayals have been witnessed before and they've emerged on top despite it. So what is Udhav Sena's strategy? In a bid to save the toppling MVA government, the party faction led by Udhav Thakre filed a petition before the deputy speaker seeking disqualification of rebel MLA Eknath Shinde and 15 others. Udhav's camp is continuing to target the BJP rather than Eknath Shinde. Sena MP Sanjay Raut said the BJP was making below-the-belt remarks against NCP chief Sharad Pawar and even threatening him. Pawar Saab, our Raut further went on to say that the fight is over numbers, papers and on the streets now and that the Sena would win all three. But how would they do that? He never answered. Bureau report, India Today. So that Kodak moment of all those uh, Shinde Sena MLAs, where are they actually from? I mean, it's become such a, uh, such a cloud of names and faces. How do we know where they're actually from? Where, you know, their, their constituents must be missing them. Take a look at where all these uh, rebel MLAs are from. At least four of them are from Mumbai. Six of them are from Thane. So four from Mumbai, six from Thane, three from the Raigad region of Maharashtra. Five are from Western Maharashtra. Eight of them are from the Marathwada region, politically important Marathwada region. Three of them are from Vidarbha, which includes uh, Nagpur. Six are from North Maharashtra, bordering Gujarat. And two are 
from Konkan in southern Maharashtra, coastal southern Maharashtra. Now, everything has been happening so far on the political battlefield. But what if this now goes to court? What if one of the sides approaches court to get their way? What is the legal perspective on how things can play out? We break it down for you. Take a look. The Shinde Sena versus Uddhav Sena battle is now in the most crucial leg. The battle to be declared the real Shiv Sena. Eknath Shinde is going in for the kill. He is all set to parade his MLAs before the Maharashtra Deputy Speaker to prove that he has 37 Sena MLAs with him. That's two-thirds of the party's strength in the House. But it won't be a walk in the park, as the Uddhav Sena has demanded the disqualification of 16 MLAs, including Eknath Shinde. And that's why one man, perhaps, will decide the next course of action, if it will be advantage Uddhav or advantage Shinde. Maharashtra doesn't have a speaker yet. And so, it's Deputy Speaker Narhari Zilwal who has all the powers of the speaker and will take a call on who wins round one. He will take a decision on whether to uphold Uddhav's petition to disqualify the rebels or to act to the resolution letter sent by Shinde with the signature of 37 MLAs. वैसा तो लगता है वो जांच करने के लिए उसको सामने बुलाना पड़ेगा देखूंगा मैं अभी पढ़ रहा हूं क्या-क्या है वो उसके बाद मैं डिसीजन लूंगा For now the deputy speaker has delivered one blow to Eknath Shinde he's recognized MLAs from the Uddhav Sena camp as the party's legislative party leader and the chief whip so is Shinde staring at disqualification along with a handful of his colleagues who've been targeted by Uddhav Sena According to the 10th schedule, if an MLA gives up membership of the party voluntarily or joins another party, he or she can be disqualified. Also, if the MLA votes or abstains from voting in contradiction to the party's stand, he or she again faces disqualification. The only exception to these rules, if two-thirds of the party decides to switch, like Shinde has managed. जो उन्होंने गठनेता चेंज किया है वो उसके लिए गठनेता चेंज करने के लिए पूरे सभी विधायक जो है उनकी मीटिंग बुलानी पड़ती है और मेजॉरिटी से गठनेता तय किया जाता है वो एक तो इलीगल गठनेता बनाया है Shinde Sena has another trick up their sleeve to take on the deputy speaker. On June 21st, they filed a notice to remove Zirwal as the deputy speaker for removing Shinde as the legislative party leader without consulting the Sena MLAs. And using this notice, there's a reminder being sent across to the deputy speaker now that he cannot decide on the disqualification, citing a 2016 Supreme Court order, which said that no decision can be taken if the deputy speaker's position as the speaker is being challenged. It's clear the fight for power in Maharashtra is no cakewalk and will be a threefold one in the courts, in the assembly, and in the election commission. कानूनी लड़ाई तो चलती रहेगी लेकिन हर लड़ाई को हम तैयार हैं जिस प्रकार से भारतीय जनता पार्टी हर स्टेट में जहां बीजेपी का शासन नहीं है वहां की सरकारें तोड़ फोड़ कर अपनी सरकार बनाना चाहती है so who will emerge victor in the Maha Game of Thrones? Shinde has the numbers, Udhav has the legacy. And both are unrelenting in their fight to be declared the real Shiv Sena. With Nalini Sharma, Bureau Report, India Today. So the real Shiv Sena is still to stand up. One has the numbers, the other has the legacy. But ultimately, it's going to come down to who can show the real numbers. At this point of time, Eknath Shinde appears to have the advantage. But we don't know if anyone else has an ace up their sleeve. Here are the questions, meanwhile, that nobody is asking. Everyone's asking all the obvious questions. But here, for instance, are some of the slightly more complicated questions. Question number one, will Udhav resign before the final act? There's a meeting coming up at 6.30 p.m. Anything can happen. Does Sharad Pavar, the man who always has all the answers, does he have an ace up his sleeve? Great expectations of that from Udhav supporters. Will Shiv Senix hit the streets to agitate? There have been some subliminal threats 
that you know the, the rebel MLAs will face threats from Shiv Sainik once they come back. When will that mobilization actually happen? Is the Udhav Sena keeping that as a last resort? Why is the BJP so conspicuously silent? That silence was only broken today, courtesy India today, when Piyush Goel had a brutal attack on this entire Mahagadi crisis. And finally, who's funding this Gohati rebel vacation? They've been in there for three days and counting. Total luxury. You can imagine the number of rooms and the amount of money that's being spent on them. Who's funding all of this? And the constituents of all these MLAs must be wondering, when are you going to come back and represent us? That's the big question. But no matter what you say, the fact is, Eknath Shinde is sitting in the driver's seat of a situation that has been unfolding since India Today's news break on Tuesday morning. And as you can see, the numbers he has in his hand at this point of time are only growing. They've been growing for the last few days and they don't appear to be chipping away at this moment. The Udhav Sena has said that they are in touch with some of these MLAs, but that hasn't been proven at least so far. Eknath Shinde has given his most extensive and detailed interview to India Today, excerpts of which we will be playing out in just a short while from now. But Eknath Shinde has all the answers. He says he's not in touch with the BJP. He says he's not looking for anything apart from actually holding and taking forward the legacy of Bala Sahib Thakre. But that's all just daggers in the wind right now because... He has postponed his return to Mumbai, obviously because there are still some levers that are being pulled and pushed. And Eknath Shinde is only, after all, a human politician. So he may look all powerful right now, but he is also vulnerable to possible pulls and pressures. There are many considerations that he has to take into view before the final countdown. He's hoping to have all bases covered before moving in for the kill and taking that flight back from Guwahati to Mumbai. And like I said, there's a minute by minute breaking on this big story. Here's the latest that we're bringing to you from Guwahati. Eknath Shinde has just tweeted, putting out a video by a Shiv Sena MLA who is now in Guwahati. The latest MLA to come in, Yamini Jadav. He's just put out a video of Yamini Jadav, one of the MLAs who's arrived in Guwahati says, we are all in Shiv Sena, but everyone should understand why it is time to take this decision. So the case is still being built. Yamini Jadav of the Shiv Sena, her video saying everyone should understand why this decision is being taken. So the Shinde Sena is holding strong, building its case, building its narrative, trying to fight back the suggestions from the Udhav Sena in Mumbai that these are rebels or termites who have made the party hollow. It's a legacy war that goes to the core of Bala Sahib Thakre's traditions for the Shiv Sena. Each one not willing to allow the other to stake claim to Bal Thakre's legacy. Udhav versus the Shinde Sena with Yamini Jadav, the latest MLA, whose video has been tweeted by Eknath Shinde, where she says, we are all in the Shiv Sena, but everyone should understand why it is time to take this decision. She's speaking, of course, in Marathi. Saurabh Bhaktanya is live with us. Saurabh, break this down for us. Eknath Shinde tweeting a video of Yamini Jadav with an emotional statement. Take us through what it means. It's a clear message, Gaurav. A very emotional uh, speech, a very emotional video by given out by Yamini Jadav. We need to understand Yamini Jadav, uh, husband uh, Yashwan Jadav, was the uh, standing chairman of BJP, the former chairman, uh, standing chairman of the BMC. And what had happened over there is that uh, several IT raids conducted uh, on the Jadav family. And now this video statement coming out from Yamini Jadav, a very emotional statement. She's holding her hand and trying to speak out the whole thing that uh, the real Sena is this one. We were facing so many problems. And that it. Yamini Jadav has spoken out. That video has just been put out. She's folding her hands and saying we are all 
in the Shiv Sena, but everyone needs to understand why we have taken this decision. Very tellingly, the video has been tweeted by Eknath Shinde himself. The rebel Sena leader himself has put out this particular video. It's the latest play from the rebel camp in Gohati. The emotional back and forth between Mumbai and Gohati is escalating. Udhav Thakre has just called the rebel MLAs and uh, Shiv Sena members as insects and rodents who have hollowed out the party. And now the party has hit back and said, we are the Shiv Sena and everyone needs to understand why this rebellion is taking place. This is getting harder, it's getting more ruthless and it's getting more emotional. We will have Yamini Jadav on the phone line with us in just a short moment from now as well. But that's her in the blue in a video that's been put out by her de facto boss for the moment. Eknath Shinde who has put this video out as a direct reply to both Udhav Thakre as well as Aditya Thakre. Let's get Saurabh Bhaktania back in on this. Let's get our reporters from the newsroom back in on this. Let's get anyone who's willing to come forward, speak to us on this story. Let's play this out. किंबहुना हे जग सुद्धा आम्ही शिवसैनिक म्हणूनच सुद्धा यशवंत जाधव मध्ये साहेब वयाच्या सतरा वर्षापासून शिवसैनिक आहे अनेक अडचणी आल्या फायनान्शियल क्रायसिस आले अनेकदा इलेक्शन हरावी लागले पण कधीही त्यांनी असा वेगळा विचार पक्षा बाबतीत केलेला नाही गेले काही महिने ऑक्टोबर पासून माझ्या आयुष्यात एक वादळ आलं कॅन्सर नावाचं ज्या वेळेला आम्हाला समजलं माझ्या फॅमिलीला समजलं पूर्ण फॅमिली तुटली या कॅन्सर या आजाराचं जी माहिती आपल्या पक्षाला द्यावी लागते ती माहिती यशवंत जाधव साहेबांनी प्रमुख नेत्यांना दिली होती एक महिला आमदार म्हणून माझी अपेक्षा होती की माझ्या घरी काही नेते येतील आपल्या महिला आमदार कॅन्सरने त्रस्त आहेत हीच गोष्ट मोठी हलवणारी होती मला स्वतःला कॅन्सर या शब्दाने मी कोलमडून दिली होती फॅमिलीने माझ्या बायका विधानसभेतल्या सगळ्या शिवसैनिकांनी आम्हाला खूप साथ दिली मी त्यांचे आजही आभार मानू इच्छिते अपेक्षा होती की माझी विचारपूस केली जाईल एक आधाराची थाप यशवंत जाधव आणि यामिन जाधवच्या कुटुंबाला मिळेल पण तसं झालं नाही काही ठराविक लोक जसं किशोरीत आहे त्या माझ्या घरी आल्या दोन तास बसल्या अनेक कॅन्सर बाबतीच्या सूचना मला त्यांनी दिली आध्यात्मिक सूचना सूचना त्यांनी दिली हे कर ह्याने तुला बरं वाटेल पण ज्यांच्याकडनं अपेक्षा होती तर कोणीही कोणी कुठल्याही नेत्यांनी मला या बाबतीत शी ट्राय टू कन्सोल मी शी टोल मी मेनी थिंग्स अबाउट द डिजीज कॅन्सर अँड हाऊ इट It, it should be treated namaskar jay maharashtra ni yamini yashwanta jadav amdar bhaika gela kahi divasatle ghadamudi ja ghadat ahe tyamule maharashtratle shivasainikancha udrek ami nakkis samjhu shakto pan ami hi ajunahi shivasainik ahot ya pudehi shivasainik ranar ahot किंबहुना हे जग सुद्धा आम्ही शिवसैनिक म्हणूनच सुद्धा यशवंत जाधव साहेब त्रेचाळीस वर्ष शिवसेनेमध्ये साहेब वयाच्या सतरा वर्षापासून शिवसेना अनेक अडचणी आल्या फायनान्शियल क्रायसिस आले अनेकदा इलेक्शन हरावी लागले पण कधीही त्यांनी असा वेगळा विचार पक्षा बाबतीत केलेला नाही गेले काही महिने I'm going to translate from the Marathi uh, from what Yamini Jadav is saying right now. Yamini Jadav is saying Udhav Thakre is talking about his health concerns. 
I am a person who has suffered from cancer. And that I also expected that some people would ask about my health, but Udhav Thakre did not ask about my health. So why is he now talking about this? I also had cancer, but Udhav Thakre did not ask about me. So Yamini Jadav is the rebel MLA with the Shinde uh, Sena representing the Baikala constituency in Mumbai. She has dropped this emotional bombshell from Gohati this evening in a video that's been put out by Eknath Shinde. Listen in once again. Need to understand why we took this step. We are all Shiv Sainik, she says. कैंसर बाप्तिचा सूचना मला तैने दिली अध्यात्मिक सूचना सूचना तैने दिली हे कर याने तुला बरवार दिन पन जनचा करना अपेक्षा होती तक कोणी ही कोणी ही पुटले ही नेता नहीं मला या बाप्ति पूछा कुछ कोई नहीं यामिनी जादव विल बी ऑन इंडिया टुडे इन जस्ट अ शॉर्ट मोमेंट फ्रॉम नाउ an emotional counter strike from the Shinde rebel base in Guwahati directed at Udhav Thakre. Now it's gotten even more personal viewer. I don't, I don't know if you've noticed, but now it's becoming very, very personal. Udhav Thakre tries to invoke the heartstrings by saying, I was sick and that's why I was inaccessible, you know, looking for the sympathy factor. And that, you know, the, 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 the rebel MLAs are people who are selfish, who have eaten the party inside out. And now the counter strike comes in from Gohati, where Yamini Jadav, rebel MLA belonging to the Eknath Shinde Sena, fires back and says, I had cancer, but Udhav did not come and meet me, did not even come and ask about me. It's become an extremely personal, very sentimental, very emotional crossfire between Mumbai and Gohati. Ritwik Bhalekar live with me. Ritwik, what are you making of this Yamini Jadav video that's just been put out by Eknath Shinde? A very emotional counter strike from Gohati. Ritwik. Whatever happens, they're going to uh, update you about it. That's the end Yes, absolutely. After an emotional appeal made by CM Uddhav Thakre, to all his cadre, to all the Shiv Sainiks in Maharashtra and he is being holding meetings with them now. Uh, a video with an emotional appeal has come to the foray. Uh, this is from Yamini Jadav who is also Shiv Sena MLA from Bhaikala area and she is the wife of Standing Committee Chairman of BMC, the biggest municipal corporation in India, uh, Yashwan Jadav. She is saying that uh, she was suffering from an ailment, a disease, and uh, she was still working for the party for so many years. Uh, she's also saying that ex-mayor Kishori Pednekar, uh, sh she visited her house, she used to console her, she used to talk to her, she used to tell her many things about how this uh, disease can be cured and it could be treated, and she used to offer help. But never ever, never ever the party president Uddhav Thakre inquired about it. Uh, they never uh, asked uh, anything about it and they were just uh, left lonely all the time. Uh, I should tell you here that Yashwan Jadav who is also on the radar of IT, IT department. The IT hmm. raids hmm. were carried out at his place. Uh, several flats were seized. At that time also we saw Kishori Pednekar visiting his house and consoling the family of uh, uh, Jadhav. But never ever she's saying that as a party president who claims to be the head of the family, of the family called Shiv Sena, he never or no one from his family came forward and inquired about her and they never took care of them. Okay. Ritwik, thanks very much. Uh, you know, we've just got some disturbing news coming in that uh, you know, there is some vandalism that is taking place courtesy Shiv Senix who are turning their anger against some of these rebel MLAs who are sitting in Guwahati. Some of their offices are apparently being attacked. That's going to be breaking right after this very short break. Continuous rolling coverage on this non-stop unfolding story that India Today broke first on Tuesday morning. No end in sight. Big breaking coming up after this break. Stay with us.
Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjtag.com or call 9999892171. There's a high stake contest going on over the Indo-Pacific region. Chinese fighter jets have started to regularly threaten US allies and the experts are fearing a repeat of the 2001 incident where a Chinese fighter jet clashed with a US Navy aircraft. What are these Chinese warplanes doing? It was reported that Chinese warplanes regularly buzzed a Canadian reconnaissance plane monitoring North Korea. The crew was forced to alter course to avoid a collision. In another instance, the Chinese fighter jets fired metallic shaft across the course of an Australian surveillance aircraft. The Chinese officials praised its pilots for these maneuvers and stated that they were defending the country's sovereignty. Experts think that targeting US allies such as Canada and Australia might be a means to investigate the coalition's weaknesses. This is not the first time they have tried to buzz past US allies. Most recently, Chinese fighter jets flew close to a Canadian surveillance plane. 60 such reports of interceptions were noticed by Canadian aircrafts. But why are they targeting US allies and not the US? Experts think that the intimidation is to drive a wedge between the US and its allies. The US depends on its allies in scenarios like supporting economic sanctions or a ground war, and China intimidating US allies sends a clear message that the allies will face Chinese aggression if they support the US. This seems like a strategy to demoralize and weaken the US allies and partners. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjtag.com. You are watching India. The center's Agnipath recruitment scheme has indeed received a lot of flack. We've seen protests unfolding. But did you know that there are some countries that have adopted an Agnipath-like scheme to recruit soldiers in their countries? Countries like the United States and France follow a similar short-term contractual basis. Agnipath scheme will see youths between the age of 17 and a half to 23 being contracted for four years into the armed forces. Here's a quick look at some of those countries that have adopted an Agnipath-like scheme in their country. America enrolls personnel for a period of four years. That's followed by a four-year reserve duty period where they can be called back again in case the need arises. They are eligible for pensions after serving 20 years in the army. And those who opt out early are eligible for certain allowances and perks as well. China has compulsory induction. Chinese males above the age of 18 have to serve in the military service. As per the law, the term of service for conscripts is three years in the army and four years in the navy as well as the air force. The country spends about $293 billion on its armed forces. 